Hello everyone, so in this tutorial I'm going to show you how I did this painting here of Maisie's ear. So this was a large painting that I did for myself, I have got snippets of this already on YouTube. This was a large painting, so this was 29 by 21 inches and as I say it was of my own two dogs. So last month I added an acrylic tear to my Patreon channel and this ear featured in one of those videos in October. Now the reason why I've selected this ear for a tutorial over there on Patreon is because this has quite a strong glow where the light source is from behind Maisie's head. So this does create a quite an interesting look so I wanted to really break this down which I'm also going to show you here in this tutorial. Now if you've watched some of my other videos here on YouTube you'll know that I like to work on smaller areas so at the moment I'm just blocking in my main sets of shapes, my highlights and my shadows. I'm not really focusing on the exact colour at this stage, I am just wanting to get my base layer down and uh, a fairly good base foundation so that I can then start adding my details on top with additional layers. Now when I'm working on the stages at the moment, as I say, I'm not focusing on the exact colour. Now that is something that can really sort of really hinder us because the, the colour is can be stressful, knowing what colour to select. However, with acrylics, we have that added benefit of being able to glaze a colour over the top and change that colour very easily. So with the base layer stages, try not to fix too much on the exact colour. What's more important at this stage is that we're just mapping in our main sets of shadows and highlights, getting those highlights where they need to be, especially on an ear like this. Now, Maisie is a Staffordshire Bull Terrier and like that breed and some others, they do have quite a distinctive ear shape. Now, it can be quite challenging because of all these little creases within the ear where it does almost fold over, it, it can really catch that light in a slightly different way. Now getting the shadows and the highlights in the right place is really going to affect the shape of this ear. So really study your reference photo and try your very best to get those in the right place. Now I'm just going for close. I'm not really fixating that every little bit needs to be to the millimetre, but I do want to make sure that they are as close as I can get them. Now I like to use fairly small brushes, it just means that then I can be more accurate with my base layer. Now I speak about it in every single tutorial about how I do think the base layers are really valuable. They are our foundation for being able to then put our details on top. So I do take that extra time at this stage. As you can see, I'm not painting one solid colour down. I am really studying that photo which I've put in the corner there so that I can map in at an early stage where my lights and my darks are so that I can then be better prepared when I come to put my details on top. Now I find in order to achieve that I like to work with slightly smaller brushes. I don't really like working with anything too large because I then find that I'm more tempted to just put colour down in a much larger area than I need. So I like to go up to maybe a size 6 round with the Dela and Rowney. That's usually my larger size for a shape of the ear like this. But at the moment I'm using a filbert brush. It's able to give me a nice fine line if I want to use it on the side. But as you can see here I can also apply a slightly larger area, more paint with that brush to get more of that area infilled a little bit more quickly. Now that doesn't mean that smaller brushes um, work for everybody, it is a personal preference. If you are someone who likes to use slightly larger brushes then obviously there is no right or wrong answer. That's the really good thing about our, any medium, there are no real set rules. The only thing that's important for me is that I like to make sure that my artwork is archival and obviously the brushes aren't going to affect that element so I don't mind using generic brushes if I need to. My favourite brand of brushes are the Dela and Rowney and then I've got a couple of the Windsor and Newton but other than that I don't have any other brands in my set and I find that they really do last a very long time. You can get many different effects with a small range of brushes and I do speak about that in depth in my Patreon videos. Now this part of the ear that I'm working on at the moment where I want to start to get that glow of that light source from behind is all in the lighting. I want to make sure that also I've got that really nice colour saturation, that red orange glow coming through there but you'll see in a minute that I'm going to be using the transparent mix in white which is one of the paints by Liquitex Basics in order to create this really nice glow with that transparent layer. And if you'd like to see this ear tutorial in considerably slower footage, it is available over on my Patreon channel now and I'll link that in the description below. There are many other tutorials over there as well and I am going to be uploading quite a lot of the acrylic tutorials each month so that I can build that library because as I say I have only launched that last month. 
Now what I like to do is while one area is drying, I will then start to apply the second layer with the area that's already dried. So all I'm doing at the moment is just reinforcing the highlight on the top surface of the ear. Now what I decided to do is I actually went in and changed my background colour a little bit. I added a little bit more of that grassy effect which you'll see at the end when I put a finished photo of the painting. But what I wanted to make sure is I really captured this light source, that strong highlight across the top of her head and that glow through the inner ear. So I'm still using that same brush, really getting that chiselled brush effect by running that paint back and forth to create that nice straight line. Really just starting to map in more of those browns at the moment, bit of that burnt sienna in there. But you can see even though this at the bottom section and the middle section of the ear is only the very first layer, it's already starting to look like that reference photo. Now for me that's a big part of how I like to work because I feel that I'm more motivated when I work in this way. For me, working in smaller, more manageable sections makes a painting far less daunting. And because of that, I am able to work a lot more, not just, not quicker, but I'm able to work a lot more effectively. So if that's something that you do struggle with and you find that sometimes you sit there, you're not quite sure what bit you should be starting on, you feel a little bit overwhelmed, just break it down into more manageable sections. What I usually do is I start off with the eye, I'll then paint the area around it, and then like what I'm doing now, I'll then progress over to the ear. So that's just my preference way of working. Now that being said if you are someone who likes working in whole set layers that is also perfectly fine there is no right or wrong answer for that either. Now this portion of the tutorial on Patreon I really do go in depth with this because in order to create this effect we need to layer the paint in a specific way. I'm working with multiple glazes but what I need to do before I really focus on that kind of glow effect I have to make sure that my shadows are dark enough. Just like many elements of a painting, your contrast is so important in getting that overall depth within that area that we're working on. If you could have two paintings side by side, one with the exact colour and the contrast isn't quite right, or the one next to it where the colour is slightly off but the contrast is spot on, that second painting is usually going to get a lot more attention than the one next to it, mainly because the contrast is there, it draws your eye a lot more and it will keep you looking at that painting for longer. One thing we have to remember is no one will have that reference photo. They won't know if your colour is ever slightly off. Now that being said, obviously, we want to go for as close as we can in terms of colour to the reference photo. And I do speak about that again in my Patreon tutorials, but it is something that we don't have to stress about. The one thing that I do tell people on Patreon is this photo that I took of Maisie, could the, the, the clouds could have gone over the sun and the white balance within that photo could have changed within a split second. That is going to ultimately then make her fur colour slightly different. So as long as we go for close, I do find that that is perfectly fine. Now I think this kind of ear is more difficult to capture than something like a German Shepherd or a Labrador, those kinds of ears where they might have more fur. Especially if you have got a Labrador where obviously the, the ear does fold over completely, you can't see any inner part of that ear at all. Whereas what we're painting at the moment, this is skin and I do find this is a lot more difficult to replicate. But as you can see here, I've just broken it down into set layers. I'm just really focusing on those lights and those darks. By breaking it down in this way into individual layers within those smaller sections of the ear, work on one crease at a time if you have to and that will help to really get this skin texture in place. Now that I've got my base layer as dark as it needs, I'm start to be able to create this rolled over effect on the top crease of the ear here. Now when you're working on highlights like this within this kind of ear, we want to keep those highlights to the middle of that crease. That will help to create that rolled over effect within this ear. But although we're keeping it in the middle, we still don't want there to be a harsh line. So you can see that I am using an additional brush to blend out the top and bottom edge of this paint to really help with that 3D effect. Also, one big tip that I'll give anybody when they are creating this glow effect within the ear is try not to put any of your darker colours with that Mars Black mixture over the glow area. You'll notice that I've kept that area completely clean. I've only been using my orange red colors there and I wanna make sure that I maintain that. 
The reason being that although we do have that added benefit of being able to completely change a colour should we need to with acrylics once that layer underneath is completely dry, by making sure that I don't go too dark with my base layer and I have preserved that colour right from the very beginning, I'm going to be able to get this glow effect as punchy as I need. Now that being said, if you do find that you've gone too dark, the one thing that you can do is just get your opaque white, so that would be your titanium white, apply a layer of that over the area where you're going to have that glow effect and then just once that's dry, reapply that yellow, orange, red colour on top and that will help to get that, uh, uh, that, that glow effect back in place because you have put an opaque layer down first. And that doesn't just you know, go for working on the ear, that could be anything where you've realised that you've gone too dark or you need to get a vibrant colour. I like to use Liquitex Basics and a lot of their colours are very transparent. I like that about them because I work in glazes. But let's say if I was doing an underwater scene and there was a bright yellow fish and I had my dark blue water, I would paint that fish completely white first with my titanium white, wait for that to dry and then I'd be able to put my yellows on top and get that as vibrant as I need to. The problem would be is if you were doing the yellow over the blue background of the water, that yellow would be nowhere near as bright or vibrant as it needs to be because they are quite translucent colours. So if you are finding that problem, put a layer of white down first and then try putting your brighter colours on top. So what I'm doing at the moment is now that I've got my shadows as dark as they need to be and I've got really good contrast here, I'm going to start to add my very subtle highlights on top. Now these would be my mid-tone highlights, as you can see they're not my brightest values but these tiny little details do make all the difference. Really zoom into that photo if you're using a tablet and see where these subtle differences in that ear are taking place. Now something that I will just quickly point out is this painting is really big, it's bigger than life size so I was able to get a ton of detail in very small areas. If you're painting something that is much smaller we need to be realistic with how much detail we're going to be able to fit within the inner ear. If you are working smaller my biggest tip would be is to pay attention as always to those highlights and your shadows. That is going to be, even when you're working on the smaller scale, that's going to make that ear that much more realistic. We might not have that space in order to add all of the tiny details, but we can still hint at that lighting. Now one of the biggest tips and what's something to remember at any point of the portrait, regardless of the breed, is make sure that once you've done the ear, that you start adding the details of the fur that overlap that ear. The reason being is at the moment here this ear doesn't look like it joins onto the head because there is that harsh line. So what you want to make sure is that you drag some of these tiny details across over onto the inner ear so that it looks like then that the head is slightly in front of the ear which obviously is how this, this ear position would be on Maisie's head. Her ear is slightly set back on the skull so we want to make sure that we are hinting at that in our painting. So these details here, they're going to vary substantially depending on the breed that you are painting. Maisie, being that uh, Staffordshire Bull Terrier as I say, has that very short coat, but she does still have these details that overlap the ear. If you have something, a much longer coated dog, these details here are going to not only be a lot thicker, but obviously a lot longer. So really study that photo to see how much pressure you need to put on that brush to vary the thickness of your brush strokes, see how long you need to make those. You might have to switch over to a liner if you're working on a border collie, for instance. But all of these details that overlap the ear are really important. And here is the finished painting. So I've got Maisie on the left and Lexi on the right. As I say, they're both my dogs. And what I'm going to do with this is because this was such a large painting and I do still have the footage, I decided to break some of these elements up for videos on my Patreon channel. So one, for instance, is how I did the grass. I know grass can be very challenging to paint. So I wanted to make that into a separate tutorial as well. So I really hope this video here was of use. If it was, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up because it really does help. And if you'd like to get notified of future content that I upload, hit the subscribe and the bell button. And if my Patreon channel is of interest, I'll link that in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching.